A construction site has several unique characteristics and risks. That's why it's essential that the work performed there is well managed and supervised. This role belongs to the principal contractor. But you might be asking yourself, on a residential construction site, who is the principal contractor? According to the Act Respecting Occupational Health and Safety, it is the owner who is the principal contractor, unless there is someone on site responsible for all the work. During the construction of a house, it is often the general contractor who is the principal contractor. Whereas for more targeted work, such as roofing renovations, it's usually the specialized contractor. But in certain situations, like an extension or renovation where the owner wishes to retain some of the work, identifying the principal contractor isn't always obvious. There can be only one principal contractor per site. They must have the required authority over all workers, either by contractual agreement or because the workers on site work for them. The principal contractor has the same obligations as an employer and must therefore take the necessary measures to protect the health, safety, and physical and psychological integrity of all workers. Both before and during the work, they have numerous administrative and management obligations. In certain situations, the principal contractor has additional obligations. For example, when work takes place in confined spaces, during demolition, when working in the presence of asbestos, or when work is carried out above or near water. The principal contractor has several administrative responsibilities. They are responsible for submitting the site opening notice to the CNESST. Depending on the site, they must also submit notices of demolition, plans and procedures, and the site closure notice. All these documents can be submitted online. The principal contractor is responsible for organizing safety on the site. They must ensure not only the safety of workers, but also of subcontractors, visitors, and the public. In other words, everyone who accesses the site. During the work, it's the principal contractor's responsibility to identify, correct, and control all risks on the site, including the CNESST's zero-tolerance risks. To achieve this, they must implement mechanisms for participation and prevention. The principal contractor must develop a site-specific prevention program in collaboration with the various subcontractors when it is planned that 10 or more workers will work simultaneously on the site. They are responsible for forming a site committee when there are 20 or more workers. The principal contractor must promote the presence of a part-time health and safety representative when there are between 10 and 99 workers on site. The HSR must be designated by workers present on site. They must promote the presence of a full-time health and safety representative designated by all representative associations and appoint a health and safety coordinator from the start of the work when there will be 100 workers or more or when the cost of the work exceeds $12 million. The principal contractor is responsible for job site access and public safety. They must define the boundaries of the job site and ensure that access is limited to authorized persons at all times. If there is ever a danger to the public, the necessary measures must be taken to protect them. Vehicle traffic must be controlled to protect everyone on site. The principal contractor must circumscribe and identify work areas, backup areas, and zones reserved for pedestrians. They must also ensure the delimitation of a safety perimeter where lifting or handling equipment is used. When there are 10 or more workers on site, they must prepare a traffic plan and ensure that it is respected at all times. The principal contractor is responsible for first aid. 
They must ensure that an adequate number of first aid kits are available at all times on site. There must be enough so that any worker can access them in five minutes or less. The kits must be in good condition, complete, and contain the minimum content required by the CSA standard. It's important to note that the CNESST does not mandate companies to sell kits and that it is not necessary to replace them every three years. No warranty or certification is necessary. When there are 10 or more workers, the principal contractor must also ensure the presence of at least one first aider on site. The principal contractor is responsible for fire protection. They must ensure that fire extinguishers are ABC type and certified. They must be installed on each floor near exits and in high-risk fire areas. They must be in good condition, charged and inspected annually. The principal contractor is responsible for toilets on site. They must ensure that they are available from the first day of work and in sufficient quantity according to the number of workers. They must be located 150 meters or less from the job site. They must be easily accessible, kept clean at all times, and heated in cold weather. The principal contractor is responsible for means of access. Whether temporary or permanent, the principal contractor must ensure the presence of safe means of access. They must ensure that the construction of stairs and ramps is done in accordance with regulations. For buildings under construction, they must ensure that there are two exits served by permanent or temporary accesses. The principal contractor is responsible for maintenance and arrangement of the worksite. They must ensure that work surfaces are kept clean and clear. They are responsible for waste management. Waste must not accumulate, obstruct work, or access to the site. To prevent falls from the same height, the principal contractor must ensure that tools and equipment are stored when not in use. That wires and hoses on the ground are covered when workers are present and that electrical cords are compliant and placed so as to run along walls or are suspended. They must ensure that materials are carefully stacked. And they must ensure that any protruding piece is quickly removed, bent, protected, or cut. They must also ensure that lighting is adequate, that is, equivalent to daylight. The principal contractor is responsible for ensuring temporary heating. Whether electric or combustion, the principal contractor must ensure that it is CSA certified and that it is used safely. The principal contractor is also responsible for managing the risk of fire. When heating is by combustion, the principal contractor must ensure air quality at all times by measuring carbon monoxide concentrations. The principal contractor is responsible for guardrails. They must ensure that they are present and that the installation is compliant. They must also cover or secure all floor openings to prevent falls. The principal contractor is responsible for the temporary electrical installation and lockout. They must ensure the compliance of the temporary electrical installation. The installation must be weather resistant not at risk of being hit by machinery or materials, not placed on the ground, and able to be locked. The principal contractor is also responsible for the management and application of lockout measures on site. They must provide lockout equipment, including single-keyed padlocks, unless a subcontractor is responsible. But in any case, they have to approve the lockout method. Being a principal contractor means having significant and numerous responsibilities. To help you meet your obligations, use the many resources of the APCHQ. If you have questions, our advisors are here for you.